there are scientific dreams that have to be implemented from an engineering perspective and that's where the time comes in and that's where the planning comes in and the iterations. There are the dreams of the scientists and the reality of the engineers and somehow you have to have that come together and that's where you get your mission in the end. I knew this was a big mission but I did not perceive how big it was and it is much much bigger than I think anyone anticipated. Most emotionally for me were the first images we got from the surface of the comet and there was something almost religious I think in terms of how you felt seeing those first images come down and I think in particular that you could see this juxtaposition of you could see the lander leg and then you could see the body of the comet behind it. This, these first images from the surface of the comet and that comparison between something that is possibly older than 4.6 billion years old and then we've got something that we made about 20 or so years ago next to it. So you've got that comparison, 20 years old, 4.6 billion years old and that was mind blowing. The best example of somebody being relieved was in January last year when we had come out of hibernation, well, we were coming out of hibernation, so we'd switched the spacecraft off over two years before that, in 2011, and we had no idea whether the spacecraft was still there. We just didn't know anything. And so we're all sitting there waiting or standing by, by at some point, waiting for the signal to come back from the spacecraft. And when it came back, we were all relieved, of course, but I think one of the most relieved people that I saw, even in their face, was the guy who wrote the software that initiated the wake up of the, of the spacecraft. So for me, that is the picture of relief that I've got burned into my brain. Looking around when we were all applauding and cheering and looking to this guy who had written the software and that is the picture of relief for me. Somebody going, I knew it would work. It's phenomenal that we're trying to survive or get this data on what is a very, very weak telephone signal effectively. That, that's the kind of power we're talking about. And we have to have massive satellite dishes to enable us to download this data. The science had to be capable of achieving what it needs to be achieved with such a thin, a very a, a massive bottleneck, which is distance and power that you have available to transmit these signals. And still, with all of those constraints, we're still doing fantastic, data, fantastic science with the data that we have. Once the spacecraft is finished, once we've put the spacecraft on the surface, crashed the spacecraft, all of that data remains and our key task then is to make sure that data is the best that we can have, it, that, that its integrity remains, that we archive it correctly so that future scientists can use this data to uncover the wonders of our solar system, the wonders of our universe. Mm -hmm.